Good morning everyone and welcome to Our Small Footprint. My name is Nissa, and if you're new here we are a family of eight who live off-grid in Australia. Uh, the current videos that I'm doing are my series that I do for however long it takes me. Once I do my six weekly grocery shop I do some daily videos to show you what I'm doing with all the food, how I'm prepping it, how I'm storing it, freezer meals, preserving, all that sort of thing. So today's video is uh, using up some zucchini and using some more of the chicken thighs. What else did we do today? We did, oh, we pulled the salt cured egg yolks out as well. Um, and I can't remember now what else there was, but a few bits and pieces today. Uh, we're still doing, I didn't end up with film from today, but I'm still doing those tomatoes. So I've been doing three or four trays every day of the tomatoes to roast. And then in like over three days, I'll do it all. And then at the end, I'll can it as pasta sauce. So you will get that in the next couple of days, the canning of the pasta sauce with all those roasted tomatoes. Uh, so we will do that shortly. I also skinned some and used some, some will be used for tomato soup. So we'll have all that as well come on you know, ongoing. So hope you enjoy watching today and I will see you all again tomorrow. Thanks guys. We got some zucchini from the hamper the other day and zucchini doesn't last particularly well in our weather. We don't have any room in the fridge at the moment so it's been sitting out so it needs to get used. So I decided to just grab half of it and grate it up for fritters for dinner. So I don't do much in the way of measurements with my zucchini fritters. Uh, I tend to grate whatever zucchini I have and then I adjust the other ingredients to suit that amount of zucchini. So basically I just grated as much zucchini as I wanted to use tonight and then we work from there. So I use the drum grater on my KitchenAid, you can use the Thermomix to mince it up, but I don't like that mince texture. I prefer it to have those long shreds and have that slightly better texture than being minced up. There is a new grading attachment coming out for the Thermomix in the new year, which will be interesting to give a go. Save me dirtying another appliance as well, so I'll be interested to try that when it comes out. Uh, so then I just salted it and let it sit for a while and then drained it using the colander and then I drain it further by squeezing it. So I don't wash any of the salt off my zucchini or anything because salt in your zucchini fritters is fine anyway. And we're trying to get rid of liquid so I don't really want to add any more liquid. So all I do is I use these flour sack tea towels that I bought in bulk from Amazon. I really love these. I use these for a lot of different things. And I put all the zucchini that has been salted into the flour sack tea towel and then I just squeeze it and get as much liquid as possible out of it. So when you're making fritters you want it nice and dry. Uh, you don't want too much liquid because it'll just make your batter runny. So, And the longer it sits in the batter the more liquid it will release so you get it as dry as you possibly can works. Uh, I decided to go with 12 eggs so again I'm trying to use up eggs and trying to use up zucchini I'm not going on a whole lot of measurements here but decided that 12 eggs seemed like a good idea of course we only crack one or two into a separate bowl and then put them into the zucchini because they're eggs from our chickens it's starting to warm up and we don't want to risk putting a half developed or a rotten one into the food so you want to put it into a bowl first so that if it is if there is something wrong with it it's not contaminating the food that you're eating because I'd hate to have to grate all that zucchini again. <laughs> so I used 12 eggs because we have plenty to use. I probably could have used a few more in here quite easily, but I just grabbed an even dozen because that seemed the right thing to do. Uh, I then mixed the eggs through the zucchini. Now I find using my hands the best way here because you want the zucchini to be coated with the, that egg mixture. I know a lot of people don't like seeing me use my hands to mix things and some people just don't like using their hands to mix things. That's perfectly fine. Use a fork, use a wooden spoon, whatever you want. I just find that using my hands in a lot of these things is just really simple. I have a sink just the other side of my bench there and I just wash my hands constantly and I find that the easiest way to do it. So I mixed it in with my hands then I added other veg. So you could use, add whatever you want in here. It, remember that it's only going to be briefly cooked. It's not going to be cooked for an extensive amount of time. So it has to be something that's shredded nice and fine or is pre-cooked. But we really like corn in these. So I just used tin corn. You could use frozen corn, but you're adding more liquid 
by using frozen corn so you have to be aware of that but I used tin corn because we buy it for this sort of thing and corn is just one of those things that makes everything better in my kids in my opinion the sweet bursts that you bite through when you're eating stuff is nice it's got great texture and it just bulks it up so I added two tins of drained corn and then I added some spices and stuff so I just used some garlic powder you could use minced garlic I used some garlic powder I used smoked paprika because as everyone knows I use that in just about everything it's really I just really enjoy that smoky flavor added to just about everything I make luckily my kids and husband are okay with it too uh, salt and pepper and I did some onion powder as well you could use actual onion in this if you wanted but none of us are real keen on the crunch of onion so I would have had to have cooked it off first and that was just another step that I wasn't willing to do I did add some baking powder you don't have to but I added a little bit of baking powder just to give them a little bit of lightening uh, leavening agent a little bit of fluffiness uh, but some people definitely prefer not to it depends on the texture that you're looking for with your fritters uh, and then I start adding the flour in increments so I add two cups initially and then I mix it through and check the texture and add another cup and keep on going you the texture is personal preference uh, some people like a really thick batter and so they're making them like fritters like a leftover fritters I don't know what else they're called um, but it's something that my grandmother used to make for me with leftover vegetables and cold meat and stuff in a really thick batter and then fried off uh, we don't like them quite that sort of a consistency uh, so I make it sort of in between a crepe and a pancake batter not quite as thick as a as a pancake batter but not as thin as a crepe batter I want them to not spread out everywhere when you pour it in the pan but I do want it to spread a little bit because I prefer them thinner and crispier than thicker and more dense. So it really depends on your preference there to as to how much flour you add. For this batch, I ended up adding, I think it was seven cups of flour um, and they were just scooped out of the container. I didn't weigh it or anything and I just mixed it till it felt right. I marinated another pack of the chicken thighs that I had bought uh, so these will be used for the next few meals so I marinate them and cook them off and then they go in the fridge and they can be used for various different things uh, I, last time I made these uh, zucchini fritters we ran short there wasn't enough for everyone for the meal uh, I didn't I don't know whether this is quite the same amount as last time because I didn't measure it which is one of my downfalls here but it uh, last time there wasn't quite enough and we ran short by the end of the meal so I, mar I decided to put some chicken with it so I marinated the chicken thighs like normal paprika garlic cowboy candy salt and pepper some lemon juice and massaged it through uh, and then put it aside to marinate while I was waiting for the chicken to marinate and the I let the zucchini batter sit a bit to to weep a little bit and it just was a bit early to cook dinner I may pulled out my salt cured egg yolks that I did a few videos back I'll try and find that video and I'll put a link to it so uh, Jessica at Three Rivers Homestead does salt cured egg yolks that they great to use as like a parmesan alternative so I decided since we have so many eggs I'd give it a go and if this works well then I'll do some more so they've been in the salt mixture one's in a half sugar half salt mixture and one's in a hundred percent salt mixture and they've been in this for just over a week in the fridge uh, the idea is that you pull them out after about a week seven days I think is the idea I'm pretty sure these sat for about 10 just because it's what happened uh, then you brush as much salt as you can off them and then you wrap them in fabric to cure a little further now the ones in the salt and sugar mix definitely are a lot tackier they have a, a very sticky uh, surface area to them and I don't know whether that's just the moisture and the sugar whether they will harden up or not I will we will just see how that goes I kept them separate but the theory is now that they're out of the salt and sugar mixture and they're air drying that they will lose that tackiness and get firmer and drier uh, we don't have anywhere cool to hang them at the moment so I'm putting them back in the fridge in the fabric but uh, we will 
see how it all goes so the, again I've got these flower sack tea towels that I bought I bought 24 of them on Amazon and I use as I said I use them for a lot of things so I decided that this would work I couldn't find any cheesecloth or anything that was clean and around and these were clean so all I did was fold the egg yolks into little pockets all the way along the fabric and then tied it off in between so that they're not touching each other they're all covered in fabric uh, and their long strings so that I could then drape them in the top of the fridge so that they're not in contact with too much and they're out of the way. I don't obviously don't have enough fridge space to hang them in the fridge which would be ideal and I have been contemplating that maybe I need to get like a wine fridge or something and then I could use that for hanging cured meats and uh, cured this sort of thing in it at a, and they don't use a whole lot of power because they're not refrigerators as like they are refrigerators but they're running at a, a lot higher temperature than the than a standard fridge like I think they run at 10 degrees or something rather than trying to drop it down to four but it's you know one of those things that I haven't done yet so I just wrapped them up and then draped them across some jars in the top shelf out of the way hopefully they won't get disturbed too much and they'll sit in there for another week and we'll see how it comes out and I'll share that again uh, so I had two batches that I did in the towel. I did the sugar salt mixture and the plain salt mixture. The plain salt mixture would definitely had a more finished feel to them. They looked a bit like lollies to be honest, but they had they were less tacky. They were a lot drier on the surface than the ones with the sugar. So we will just assess it as we go. After I got all that sorted and cleaned up, I cooked some of the chicken off in the cast iron pan. I really like cooking in the cast iron pan like this. The cowboy candy has that sugary brine, which means that the chicken caramelizes on the outside and has its crispy outside and a nice moist inside, which works really well for me. And then I cooked the fritters. So my other cast iron pan needed to clean. So I've got a, a um, nonstick pan here as well that I'm using to cook them all. And all I do is I put in it's a scant quarter cup of batter and let it sort of spread a little bit and then I flip them when the edges are all done a bit like a pancake uh, so we like them quite crispy and well cooked all the way through so I might flip them a couple of times if need be but and I like the, t the pan to be sort of a, a mid temperature so that it's browning up nicely but it has to stay in there long enough that the inside of them gets really well cooked as well the corn and the zucchini give plenty of moisture so you can't really overcook them because they're not going to dry out because there's all that moisture in them as well uh, and then we served them up with some chicken so as i said i cooked the chicken last this time because we ran short on zucchini fritters for everyone last meal but this time we ended up with leftover zucchini fritters and i don't know whether that's because i added the chicken in or whether that is just complete coincidence uh, but I served mine up with the chicken and then I put apple butter barbecue on it. The kids had that as well. And then I had sour cream as well on mine because I had some surplus left over from the hamper and because I could. So thank you very much for joining me again today and I will see you again tomorrow. Thanks guys.